Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl from Elungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll do it for you. You can check out our second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0. You can hit the subscribe and enjoy our weekly content. We've got a podcast called Diving In with Funny and Jesse, and we have some amazing conversations which you guys don't want to miss. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, this channel, or our second YouTube channel for the visual. And we have a Patreon account. You guys can feel free to become members and we'll appreciate. A big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far and a big shout out to the people that are yet to subscribe or are subscribing as I talk. So today we're going to react to would you follow society or God? So without wasting time, let's get into the video. The lowest form of, of faith is to remove harm from the road. These people who use judge Islam by them, they put harm in the road. It's as simple as that. So when you see that the Muslim who is aware of the teaching of Muhammad peace be upon him and looks at the, a, a holistic example rather than things in isolation out of their intended context, out of their original understanding by the early Muslims, when we when we see that, then we when we when we take it out of that context, then you can play with it however you want. Yeah. Okay. And, is, and do you believe in a creator? Can I just ask? Yeah. You do believe in a creator. Yeah. Do you believe that this creator um, has given people uh, a natural inclination to understand the right and the wrong? We have like a moral compass installed within us. Yeah. Because if it was just matter that created everything, mm. what matter doesn't understand right or wrong, truth or falsehood. Mm. Okay, so there must be some moral anchor where we get our compass, our moral compass from. Mm. Okay, if we can understand that, then now society, if society was to say that killing X amount of Jews is right, for no reason, they haven't committed any crime, they haven't fought against you or anything like that, killing Jews is wrong. Mm. Okay, we know that instantly, but now our society tells us, say for example, we're 1940s, 1930s Germany, and now Hitler's come to power, the whole society is behind Hitler and they're saying, okay, let's put these people in, 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 in these camps and so on and so forth. We have a moral compass, regardless of what the people are upon. Okay, we know this is wrong. Okay, we know that this is a crime. We know that this is evil. Now, I've just used Jews as an example, but this applies to anybody. Okay, so we know this, regardless of what the society is upon. Okay, so we have this innate within us. So we, our Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him has, has told us that um, every child is born upon the natural inclination, of, of, which is Islam basically. Mm. The understanding of the one supreme creator who's created us, who's given us life and we should be grateful for him uh, for, for what he's done for us and also given us a moral compass, knowing what is right and wrong. Set by his example. Not, no, not my God's example, God's by command. Muhammad's example. God's command and all of the prophets are his examples, okay? And Muhammad is the last of them, yes. Okay, but I'm saying so born, I'm not saying a, ma a child is born knowing who Muhammad is, I'm not saying that. I'm saying a child is born knowing that they have a, a supreme creator that they are uh, subservient to and that they owe, are, are, are indebted to for their life, for their hearing, for their seeing, for the food and, and so on and so forth. Mm. And also they have a criteria that is within them that enables to distinguish between right and wrong. Mm. So our Prophet peace be upon him said that every child is born upon the fitrah, upon this natural inclination. Mm. Okay. However, it's their society that makes them a Jew, a Christian, or a fire worshiper. Mm. Notice how he never said a Muslim, their society makes them Muslim. Because mm. we believe that Islam is a continuation of that natural belief, but in more detail. Mm. So when we understand this, we can say that no society can dictate to me what is right or wrong. Rather, it is God. Now, if we know that God has said something, if we know that God has said something, and we know that the society is upon something else, who would you follow, hypothetically? No, I'm going to ask you a question, but, but does that also not mean that you should behave in accordance with the law of the land you're living in? Yeah, okay, to a certain extent, yeah. If the law of the land now is to kill kittens, I'm not going to do that. Mm. Okay, but if the law of the land doesn't oppose the God's law, of course, that's what we're, uh, we're, we're, we're obliged to do, basically. Mm. That's why we're, 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 we're not forcing anybody, our religion or anybody or anything like that. We're calling, we're within the confines of, of the law of Islam, we uphold the law of Islam. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, if you look at one of these, uh, 
which one is it? The the Muslim are the Muslims living here yeah, in the West? Okay, we're 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 encouraged by our religion to be um, positive models in our in our in our society. Mm. Our Prophet peace be upon him taught us that we feed our neighbours, and our neighbour is forty to the left, forty to the right. Okay, so they, imagine the impact that that would have. And it, if you live in a tower block, that's forty up, forty down as well. Okay, so uh, our Prophet peace be upon him told us that the highest form of iman. Mm. is to say that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. This is created that we knew about instinctively. That there is none worthy of our servitude, of our worship, except for Him. That's the highest form of faith. Mm. The lowest form of faith is to remove something harmful from the road. Mm. And to have shyness is also from faith as well. Mm. Okay, now if you focus on that, you'll see that to remove something harmful from the road is the lowest point of Iman, the lowest point of faith. Mm. Okay, now who walks on the road? The Muslim, the Jew, the Christian, the Sikh, everybody. Okay, so this is the effect that we have. Now, if you if you under if you understand the teaching of Muhammad, and you see what we've been seeing in Sky, what we've seen on CNN, we've seen all of these things. Focus on that. The lowest art, the lowest aspect of faith in Islam is to remove something harmful from the road. Mm. Now, what is the opposite of that? To place something harmful in the road. To place a bomb in the road. Mm. Now, if that is the lowest form to remove the harm, how can we now judge Islam by the actions of those who put harms in the road? That's just on a base level example, mm. without having to go into the to the claims of the, of the likes of ISIS and the likes of Al Qaeda. Without having to break down their their actual arguments and why they're wrong. Mm. Okay, from an Islamic point of view, but you need to do that. The lowest form of, of faith is to remove harm from the road. These people who you judge Islam by them, they put harm in the road. It's as simple as that. So when you see that the Muslim who is aware of the teaching of Muhammad peace be upon him and looks at the, a, a holistic example rather than things in isolation out of their intended context, out of their original understanding by the early Muslims, when we when we see that, then we when we when we take it out of that context, then you can play. With it where, however you want but when we keep it within the confines of how it was intended by uh, the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him to the primary audience to his disciples his companions and their students then that gives us a holistic understanding where we're able to understand when when is there when do the rules of war apply and when do the rules of peace apply the rules of war they don't apply getting on a bus jumping on a train isn't there a dichotomy within Islam that there's, that there's house of Islam and house of war Okay, and and there there is not okay. The, the Muslim ruler, yeah, cool. exactly. So the Muslim ruler has a number of things at his at his disposal. It's not just he's at war with them or he's or he's or, he's, or they're Muslim. Mm. What about those who, who have peace treaties? Mm. What about the peace treaties? Right. We never hear about the peace treaties. Mm. Okay, so these are any nation has these at their disposal. You would never judge England or any other country to be wrong for, for using one of these, um, to utilize in one of these means whenever it suits their agenda. Mm. So of course, they're at peace when it suits them. They're at war when they need to defend themselves. So, and the UK at the moment is House of Peace or House of War? It's House of Treaty, there's a peace treaty within, with, with them. Between who? Between the, the Muslims and, and, and uh, the UK. Who We're, represents Muslims? There's no sort there's of... There's no, there's no, there's no body, but we know that all Muslim, the Muslim countries. governments, the Muslim yeah. governments... Mm. Saudi government and so, Whereas, wherever the countries are, there's there's trade between them. There's a mutual understanding. We have agreements to live in here. We're not like, we're, we're, I'm, you know, I'm born in Shepherd's Bush. Yeah, mm. I'm born at the end of that road there, mm. West London Hospital. Mm. Yeah, so like, don't look at me like I'm some alien. Just come over here to try and chop everyone's heads off and convert you now. Mm. Um, it's not like that. I'm born in this area. Mm. Yeah, so I'm from this area. So mm. I grew up with this area. So don't think that we're just trying to impose and come here. Yeah, mm. I've, I've lived side by side, grew up side by side with these people. With, with this community here mm. in Shepherd's Bush. Yeah. yeah. So we're not aliens, yeah? No, I okay. So, um, so, yeah, like I said, the, we're, we're allowed to practice our religion here. We have a mosque here. We're, we're and are Christians allowed to practice their religion in Muslim Okay, for example, I'm, I'm from Morocco originally, yeah. yeah? My father's from Morocco, yeah? So in Morocco, we have a Jewish community that pre existed the Muslim community. Yeah. And they. The, the, Jews the, pre exist Muslims everywhere. Yeah, but why are they still in, 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 in Morocco? Why are the Christians still in Egypt? Syria. Until ISIS, the Christian, there was a, 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 an ancient Christian community in Iraq. Mm. Until ISIS. That shows you that these people don't represent Islam historically. Mm. How are these Christian communities flourishing? How did the Jewish community flourish? I don't think they're flourishing. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, how did, yeah, because if you look at the, the Christian communities, they were, they were there. If you look at the Jewish community, they flourished in Babylon. Mm. That's why we have the Babylonian Talmud, mm. okay? 
it, it, if you look at the Jewish community, they flourished in Islamic Spain. Mm. Flourished. The Jewish golden age was in Islamic Spain. My main issue is belief in the Creator. Mm. When we understand that, then we understand what does this Creator want from us? Mm. What are we to do for this Creator? Are we, is, how do we live knowing that, that we have this Creator? Mm. Do, do the, the, the prophets, how do we follow them? Mm. And is Muhammad a prophet? When we understand these things, then we can understand... My, my main question is... Is Muhammad the perfect example for people today? If you're, if you're using a materialist, Western materialist, secular lens, mm. where there is no absolute truth, mm. and everybody's claim is equal, hang on, just... But I said to you that I do believe in absolute truth. Okay, you do, you do. Yeah. But I'm saying, this, uh, this is my example now. Mm. If a person, um, mm. not you, mm. if a person Muhammad, is using a Western secular materialist lens, mm. where there is no absolute truth, mm. and, and everybody's claim and everybody's belief is equal, they're all uh, equally false. Yeah, moral relativism. Yeah, so they're all equally yeah. false. So if you claim this and you claim that, you can have your rights to do your thing because that's false, and you can have your right yeah, to do equally this. false and equally valid there is no at the same time. Exactly. Mm. So now, if you're going to view Islam through that, and that's your primary assumption, mm. and you're going to view Islam through that, of course it's not going to make sense. Mm. But your criteria is invalid. Mm. Your criteria. I'm, I'm saying go to the basis of your of your worldview. Mm. Does a materialist worldview make sense? No, I mean, I, my, a Western my, my absolutist um, moral stance is includes things like equal treatment of women, equal treatment of people of different, this is, this is different sexualities. This is injustice. Mm. I'll tell you what, you're, you're using small examples. I'm saying when you go to the foundation, you'll see the this examples is, this is about how people treat this each other. So you like, said, you so, said to treat women so, equally with men. Or, or, That's, it's or not, it's homosexuals. Not. So, for example, there's 10 countries in the world you're, you're, where you're, homosexuals are executed you're, you're reading, for their sexuality you're reading and they're off, all Islamic. You're reading off examples. You're yeah, reading off examples. Of course. Just do with I'm one. Trying, trying you said point. the men and women are equal. Yeah. Now, if I say no, that's not true, that's like a buzzword that goes off, mm. automatically what I'm going to say next is going to be a load of rubbish. This is what this is what we've been taught. Mm. Now, Islam doesn't believe in absolute equality. Mm. It believes in justice. Mm. So we don't have absolute equality between the ages. I'm going to give you a few examples and then we get to the men and women. Mm. Absolute equality between the ages. We don't have it. In Islam. Mm. Rather, the olders, yeah. people that are elder, they have a higher rank and a higher station mm. due to their their awesome. experience in life and so on and so forth. And then the younger people, they have a, they are in a lesser state. Mm. Okay. Now the same with uh, knowledge. Mm. The knowledgeable person has a higher rank and a higher state mm. than the ignorant person. A man and woman. And we'll get there. We'll get there. The 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 righteousness. Mm. The, the person who is righteous is not the same as the person who is evil and, and mm. immoral. Okay. That's why when it comes to democracy, that everybody has the same same equal val uh, valid uh, choice. Mm. That means the evil person and the righteous person is both one vote. Mm. Now what we believe in justice. You give that its place, and you give that its place. Mm. Now, I'll give you an example, a hypothetical example, my God protect you from this ever happening. Mm. Is this your, sorry, is this your sister? Sister, sorry, yes. okay. Now, it's still, it's the example will still work. You're at home with your family and your sister staying mm. over. Now, God protect you all, yeah? Mm. Now, if a burglar breaks in, mm. Now generally, now this is not the case absolutely in all circumstances, mm. but generally, the man is the protector of the house. Mm. Now, if he was absolutely equal, you would send your sister or your wife or your mm. daughter downstairs to fight off the burglar. Mm. Very interesting video. I don't think we've ever, or I don't think I've ever reacted to him. He's such a calm, um, talker like the way he explains things he's really taking his time the other person to listen i mean at the end of the day we all look at society through different ways that's why they're asking would you follow society or god because society has put into place uh certain things that you have to follow if society said today that um we should kill all africans people would do that because society has made it normal that africans should be killed but then what's god saying about those killings it's wrong because we're all human beings otherwise um we really should i think at this age we're able to tell what's wrong or right some people don't understand not some people most of us don't understand fully certain things but then with age comes we get to know more things with age and experience otherwise this was very very interesting to watch so you yourselves would you follow society or god 
um, make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video